Hey guys, I am here at the Columbus Zoo inside of the Heart of Africa exhibit here and today I have Adam Phelps. He's going to tell us more about this amazing savanna behind us. You know, we were here earlier and we saw antelope, wildebeest, there's lots of storks and we also saw the lions. So this is pretty incredible what you have here. Can you tell us more about it? It's a pretty state-of-the-art uh, exhibit. Uh, we have an eight-acre savanna wrapping around a draft yard, a lion yard, and a watering hole. We call it the watering hole. The watering hole is an exhibit that rotates almost every hour. So if you go to Africa and you're on a safari, they're gonna take you to a watering hole oh. because that's where you're gonna see more animals uh, because every animal needs water. <clears throat> so that's the idea behind the watering hole. And then the big savanna that you saw, the gazelles and the wildebeest in, that's an eight acre savanna of almost 80 different animals. Uh, about 12 different species. And what that represents is what you would see on the savannas of Africa. Uh, the idea of the exhibit is when you look out, it looks like Africa. I mean, the savanna looks like a savanna. It's a grassy savanna. You see no barriers, you see no fences. Uh, a lot of people do not realize that behind that hill over there is a housing development. We are surrounded by houses. This is pretty cool. I mean, whoever would have thought that you could, I guess, what went into the design of this? How did you guys even come up with this idea? It was almost a five-year design, and then we started construction. Construction was about two years of that, uh -huh. and construction is where, like, we had all of our ideas. Uh, it was keepers, curators, planning department, just, I mean, everybody was involved in the creation of this, of this region. And the idea was to make it feel like you're in Africa and to hide barriers, but when you start construction, that's when you really start deciding what goes where and how things look. And to be honest, that hill was not part of our plan. Uh, Jack uh, had a lot of input in this and he wanted to see Africa and he wanted not to see houses. So we just started taking all the dirt that we were using for parking lots and things like that and making Ready Mount Hannah, I call it. What kind of uh, response have you gotten from, this, from the public? I mean, we see tons of kids right now. This is a very, very, very popular exhibit. Uh, we're in our second year. Uh, usually the first year, it can be kind of stressful and things don't go as well and the second year you make adjustments. Well, we were fortunate enough to have a really good opening and everything went really well. So we didn't really have to make a lot of adjustments and we're seeing the same amount of people flowing in here as we did last summer, uh, which is pretty exciting. We had a record-breaking May, a record-breaking April, uh, and a record-breaking March. And part of that had to do, and the May had to do with people coming to see Africa. What do you think that when kids see the lions, do they get afraid? Do they get I mean, scared? I mean, they're pretty big close up. Yeah, our most common question, the lion exhibit's awesome. Yeah. Our most common question is how do you keep the lions from eating the other animals? Because you don't, again, you don't see any barriers. It's called, it's a mixed species, it's a perceived mixed species exhibit. So we made it look like they were in with the other animals, but they're not. There's actually a 16 foot wall that separates them. And the, the exhibit is designed perfectly for lions. Lions sleep for 20 hours a day. So one of our biggest complaints from visitors is, why do your lions sleep so much? Well, that's because lions, that's what lions do. So when in the heat of the day, they're gonna look for something cool. So and it, the exhibit is designed, designed perfectly because in the morning, they're out on their pride rocks, looking out in the savanna, watching the animals. When the heat starts coming, they start looking for that shade. And we put an airplane in that represents uh, what you would see in Africa if you're flying, well, kind of. Uh, but under, but the wing is inside the exhibit and under shade, and our hope was to get the lions up close and personal to the public because the window's right there. Oh my God! And then to make close. sure that we could do that, we put an air conditioner in the wing, and the uh, that ensures that uh, the, it, those animals will be on the wing so people can see them. Very cool. Okay, I'm. She's blowing so, the yes, whistle this out is, there. So what's going what's going to happen out so here? So the zebra are going to follow her. So each animal is trained to move and shift. Uh, so each animal has their own individual sound. So uh -huh. they have the whistle. Uh, so when they, these guys were young, we got the zebra when they were uh, a couple weeks old and we actually hand raised them. Uh -huh. And every time we gave them milk, we would blow the whistle. And that would help them understand they really like milk. The okay. whistle means a lot. It means nothing to the wildebeest. <laughs> because the wildebeest, when we feed them, we use, right. a, we use a tambourine. And so when we, want the, when we want the wildebeest to move somewhere, we play a tambourine and they come running in. So as you can see, there's lots of great things to do and see here at the Columbus Zoo, especially here at the heart of Africa, Savannah. It's incredible. So if you don't have anything to do this summer, definitely stop by here because it's well worth the visit. We'll see you next time.